The road to the Paris Olympics continues and it's hard to believe that it's only around six months now until those Olympic Games get set. This man, Boomer's big man, Jock Landau, is going to be a big part of that. Uh, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. And I'm wondering if I say that six months until the Olympics, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Because it is coming around quick. Mate, it's pretty scary to think that it's only six months <laughs> away, but at the same time, like it feels... I mean, I've obviously haven't, I've, I've never done a, an Olympics into another Olympics, but um, it feels like we were just in Tokyo, not, you know, a couple, couple weeks back. So uh, exciting. Um, obviously got a point to prove and all the boys are going to be uh, pretty geared up to do that. And, um, you know, our preparation, you could almost say, has already begun. We're, we're having active conversations. So I feel as though I've been kind of prepping for, for uh, that Olympics just for these, you know, past probably two months since, since Gorge came out and visited all of us and began that discussion. So, um Probably a bit late to the party there, mate, but we're, uh, yeah, we, it feels like we're gearing up already. It's interesting. We spoke to Paddy Mills a couple of weeks ago. I was able to catch up with Gorge, and it feels like that. Of course, you've got a job to do right now in the NBA, but is that the moment maybe when you talk to Gorge, perhaps it's already the case for you when it starts to feel real and it's like, okay, we understand the job we have to do, um, but this is going to come up quickly, and the preparation started really from the last World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And and look, to be honest with you, I think that part of our part of our job and part of our career is um, you know, staying ready for the next thing at all times. You just never know what that's gonna be, when it's gonna come. And um, you know, whilst we're you know, it's it's such a unique thing having to do these World Cups and Olympic games and all of that, because you go through these seasons and there's no real downtime. Mm -hmm. So Part of the preparation through this year is okay, I've got to be ready to, you know, essentially have a week you know, two months, whatever it might be for depending on where, where you finish in the NBA season. But I've got to be ready to go, you know, as as quickly as possible to 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 get prepped for that um that World Cup or that or that Olympics uh, Olympic game. So, you know, part of the preparation for me right now is making sure that I'm good to go in um, you know, six months time whenever whenever that uh, you know, that ball needs to be rolled out for the for the boomers. So the last time you spoke with ESPN Australia, you just signed the deal uh, with the Houston Rockets and the World Cup was still to follow. Uh, how do you sort of look back at the last off-season and everything you went through? Because I imagine mm. it was a roller coaster of emotions and perhaps uh, some of the memories uh, are not so good. Yeah, mate. I, uh, I, split that, I split that year pretty much down the middle. Um, I had a phenomenal you know, January through, uh, through August, essentially, or no, you know, January through July, six, seven months. And then the, the, the latter part of that, that year was, was dreadful. Um, so, I mean, it, it was a bit bittersweet, uh, to finish 2023 in the, in the manner that I did. And, um, you know, that injury kind of just kickstarted a, a chain of, um, unfortunate events, but, as soon as I got to that camp in, in Cairns, I kind of knew that something wasn't right with, with my body. I just felt a little bit sluggish and, um, you know, then, you know, I get that first injury that, you know, knocks me back for 10 days. And then uh, prior to that, I'd actually clash knees. So I was running around with this tape job on, which was really restrictive. So the whole camp, I was just kind of on one leg you know, bust my ankle up that first time in Cairns, which just sidelines me for a lot of the games in Melbourne. And then, you know, obviously get out there against South Sudan and, and, and really rip that uh, left ankle up. And, um, you know, just just like knowing where, where I was at uh, physically, there was also a bit of a mental factor going on there as well, just because like I hadn't really spent a whole lot of time on court with the fellas through that camp. You know, I was in and out with injury. I was... When I was in, I wasn't really, you know, rolling and ready to go just, just as far as having this restrictive tape job going. And, yeah, look, it was a pain in the ass. So I, I look back on that time as uh, a little bit bittersweet. It was a lot of fun, as it always is, being, being in the fight with the boys. But uh, I really wasn't putting my best foot forward and, and um, I really didn't feel as though I was, I was you know, just right overall and, you know, push to come back so that I could get into that World Cup and uh, have some level of um, camaraderie and, and, you know, continuity with the fellas just because I hadn't had much up in Cairns. But, um, yeah, you know, after that, it's just like a gruelling rehab process, which I really hadn't had to do before in my career and I wasn't 
probably mentally prepped for that and again really pushed to come back from that quickly and probably came back a little bit too soon so um yeah just that whole that whole kind of three month period of of trying to get myself right and and get back going i uh Probably took some wrong steps there, but but lessons to be learned, and, um, and I'm, I mean I feel phenomenal right now. So uh, I feel in really good shape. Uh, my my body's the best it's ever been. So I'm, yeah, I'm feeling great. Yeah, you mentioned some of those feelings when you do come into a camp, and I think from the outside, it's one of the really difficult things for someone like me to understand what it's like when you go into a camp and you need to prep straight away. Um, what did you learn specifically about how you can come into the next camp? Perhaps what you can do over the last few months. You already had some time with Brian Gorge and what are some of the things you've taken away? Yeah, uh, look, I think that like a, a few things to, to touch on there, but but one is just coming in in really, really good game shape. Like you're ready to go from, from day one. And, um, you know, I think that there might have been a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, we'll get there and we'll just figure it out as we go. Uh, but... You know, I don't think that that's going to be the case this time. You know, I just started having some, uh, having some chats with Paddy about potentially doing something prior to our actual kickoff date in uh, in Melbourne for that camp, just because I think it would be good to get up and down with one another, play some intense basketball, get used to one another again, so that when we do hit the ground running in in, in Melbourne, we really hit it running. You know, we've had some we've had some weeks, we've had some days, whatever it might be, under our belt together and. Um, I think that only pays dividends in the long run because, you know, a lot of these teams we come up against, US, France, uh, Spain, you know, they're, they're years in the making. And, you know, we were years in the making up until the 2021 Olympics. Now we've had to start fresh, um, you know, scrub the slate, slate clean and we've got a whole bunch of new guys coming in that we really need to figure out, you know. Uh, and look, it's probably going to be a different team to to what it was at the World Cup as well. Just as far as some guys, uh, some guys' growth has been phenomenal this year, and um, you've really got to factor them in as big parts of the puzzle going forward. So, um, you know, it's an ever changing thing, given that it's only ever like three or four years um, at a time. But yeah, I think that uh, I, I think that that's what I learned, and that's what I figured out was like we need to get some continuity going prior to the camp because when that camp comes, there's a lot of learning, there's a lot of teaching points, and you got to be you got to be on your game, and you got to be locked in to uh, to get those things kind of under your belt as quick as possible. So that kind of stuff, um, you know, mesh that together with just having your body ready to go and and, and you know your cardio and all of that. I think that that's probably the key. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I wouldn't believe that Jock Landau would be a good watcher of basketball, particularly when you're at home watching the World Cup. Uh, I, I, that's, no. maybe, that's maybe not an experience you want to go back and recall. But what do you remember seeing what the team was doing on the floor and some of the thoughts you were having and probably a perspective that you can bring to the team from the outside? Oh, mate, look, that's a tough question to answer, right? Because I don't want to be a, uh, I don't want to be a spectator or a critic. But, um, <laughs> well, yeah, it's... it's I know, right? Uh, it's it, it wasn't much fun at all. Um, f- more more so from the perspective that I that I knew there were things that I could be helping with, um, observing, just kind of being in 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 their you know the coaching staff is the players is trying to you know bring guys along and and just bridge a little bit of a gap between um, you know all the guys you know getting us together, getting on the same page. But um, well, look, I would say that. Um, you know, through that whole process, I was constantly texting Capes. I was constantly texting Nelly and Gorge just with what I was seeing as far as uh, when, when they were playing. But you know, there's so much more that goes into a team and goes into practice sessions and all of that stuff that I wasn't really privy to see. So I, I did have to kind of take a step back, remove myself from the situation, understanding that, like, hey, I'm not really seeing what's going on in these um, in these sessions, and they've had to change their uh, whole identity in the space of you know, you know, four or five days. What from from when I went down with my injury, thinking that I was going to be a big part of the, um, the the team. Now they've got to wrap their heads around. Okay, we've got to put Duop in, who's got a different skill set to mine, and and then you've got to figure out. Okay, what are we going to do with our secondary unit when we're playing Xavier Cooks at the at the five or Nick K at the five? Like it was just like a. It was a scenario that was tough to relate to because I just wasn't really on ground, on site, kind of listening to what the plan was. So 
all I could really do was give my perspective on, hey, like I think you need to like play a little bit quicker or get the ball in Giddy's hands more, you know, get Paddy coming off some pin downs, see what you got there. But yeah, like I was horrendous as a spectator and I was very frustrated sitting back and watching it. But, um, you know, the boys gave it their best and, you know, you plan you plan to play a specific kind of way and then it's all ripped away from you, you know, 24 hours before you go to Tokyo and you have to kind of rejig the whole system. It was just... It was a tough situation from the get-go. So one of the things that uh, I appreciate that you have walked us through is perhaps some of the headspace you're in. And now you say you're in a great spot. You're talking to Paddy. You've spoke to Gorge. Uh, what about the situation in Houston? Because I know there was excitement mm-hmm. to get there. Uh, how have yeah. you found this season? Because, I, again, I can only look from the outside, but I imagine you would like to be playing more, even if the uh, team has taken some steps this season. All I'll say is... is I just had a shocker of a run and I feel like this is the second of my three years where this has kind of happened where I came in hurt. I was not available during um, training camp or I was restricted on how many minutes I was allowed on the court during training camp. So take it back a step further than that. You know, we did, we did, uh, we did some, just some stuff as a team in the prior to the training camp. I was not a part of that at all. So I didn't really even get to know the guys until post training camp. And then you kind of, you know, you start out your first game of the, uh, no, you start out preseason games and I tweak my ankle again. So that sits me a couple nights and then you get the concussion game one of the season come back from that. And then it's like, you're sick for like a week and a half. It was like, mate, like, I had to be honest with myself because I, I was carrying a big load at the start of the season just being like, I, I can't believe this is happening. You know, this is I've worked so hard for this contract and I'm about to piss it down the drain. And, you know, how do, how do you not expect it to go this the way that it has? So, um, look, I'm fighting every day to try and scrape through with some minutes. And I think in the past month, month and a half, where I've managed to come on at the end of games or, you know, a couple of nights back, I, I managed to get in for, you know, a 10-minute stint. Um, I think the team benefits uh, having me out there playing as hard as I do and just kind of doing the dirty work. Uh, and I, I think that I'm gaining a little bit of Eme's trust. But, um, you know, there's a there's a long, long-term relationship there between him and Jeff Green. And Jeff's had a phenomenal season for us. And then obviously Alperin's had a breakout season, uh, you could call it if you want, uh, where, where the guy's kind of, you know, making a name for himself as a potential all-star. So... Yeah, I've just been kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and, um, you know, my career will will sort itself out in due course. But, um, yeah, I would say that I probably wasn't in the best place to start the ga- you know first 10 games of the season where I was getting actual uh, burn, you know, probably could rush back a little bit from a concussion and, and, and had a whole bunch of, you know, hiccups along the way. But, uh, you know, no excuses in that regard. It was just a kind of a crappy start to the year and, you know, we, we, we move forward and uh, I, f- I feel as though I've had some real opportunity to sit down and have, have some com- hard conversations with myself about, okay, what's it going to take for me to get this, get this ship back on, on the right path? And, um, you know, I, I, I'm there and I, I truly believe that. And I think I've shown the coaching staff over the past couple of weeks that I'm there and whether or not they decide to play me is up to them. But uh, they definitely know that I'm ready and, and I've had a, you know, sit down with Eme and he knows that as well. So... See what happens. Big picture, and I'm sure that some guys do ask you this. If you were going to speak, whether it's a young big man, one of the Aussie guys or whatever, uh, what do you think you would try and tell them about how to work through what you've had to work through the last few years? Because you talk about the Spurs where maybe the opportunities weren't there, then you're on a winning team. Now you're in a different situation. It feels like it's been constantly changing. And I can't personally understand how you work your way through that. What, what would the advice be, if any? Um... Jeez, mate, that's a tough one. Uh, I would just say that, that, I mean, as cliche as it is, everything in this league, everything in this life is earned and not given. And um, you see it time and time again that, that rookies, draft picks who are kind of sat at the end of the bench, mate, they, they almost give up and they almost, you know, they carry these bad attitudes with them and they... Um, they they don't uh, put as much in, expecting but expect to get more out. And 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 I would just say that anything you do 
is you know we're under a microscope everything that we do is is watched so you know diligently by everyone within the organization that you just can't let the little bumps in the road get in the way because if if there's one thing that my career as a whole say Mary's or, you know, let's take it back a step further late start in basketball cut from Australian teams never made a state team then I go to you know St Mary's get knocked back from the NBA thinking you know all uh, all American going to be drafted all of these steps along the road that I've kind of had to to overcome it, you just can't let the little the little things affect the big picture. And um, if you can kind of focus in on the day-to-day rather than looking at the, it as a whole, then then it'll work out how it's meant to work out. And, look, I'm no, no expert in that regard by any means, but I would say over the past year, you know, to three years, I've really been able to build a group around me that reminds me of that constantly. Andrew Bogut has been one of the most influential uh and level-headed people in my career that I've met to date and, you know, now I call him one of my best mates in that any time I can tell that I'm carrying myself the wrong way or I'm starting to get hung up on, oh, these guys are screwing me or whatever, just go to Bogut, text Bogut, hey, man, you know, this is BS, these guys are doing this and this and then he'll be like, mate, who cares? Like, focus on the st- little stuff, you know, carry yourself accordingly focus on the day-to-day and, 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 I mean, it's got me this far, right? Like, I wasn't meant to be in the NBA by any means, let alone earning what I'm earning and playing in playoff games last year against against Yoke. So uh, I think having kind of little lessons passed down by Bogues to me is like that, you know, focusing on the little things and not, not, not letting the uh, little bumps in the road affect the long-term picture is probably what I would pass on as well. Mate, that's incredible insight. We appreciate that. Uh, I do want to get to something positive because I feel like I've been bringing it down a little bit here. St. Mary's, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, a a pretty incredible honour. They're going to raise your number in the rafters. And this has been an Australian factory. When you get that note, how does that come through and how does that make you feel? Because it's an incredible honour. Mate, it's, um, yeah, it gives me chills. It was was pretty emotional for me. having that news come at the time it did, uh, you know, being injured out of the rotation and stuff, it was, it was a real pick me up and just helped me. I think things like that, which are edged in history and, and, you know, will, you know, never be touched again, really help you put in perspective how much that you've really achieved in, in your life and your career. And given how much we dedicate to this job, um, you know, we miss out on our 20, 20s to a degree, 30s to a degree. Um, I think that that kind of recognition helps me to recognise, hey, like, there's a lot there's a lot that you're doing here that's right. And, um, yeah, it kind of moves me in that sense. And, you know, we touched on this uh, prior to our conversation today, but uh, chatting with Paddy, because uh, Paddy, Paddy had his... Uh, jersey hung in the rafters my freshman yeah freshman year of uh St Mary's in college um he he said really embrace that moment because he didn't and so I, I really sat I've really sat back and um given myself some credit for how much work I had to put in to get that get that up there and kind of what a special um four years I gave to St Mary's and how much I gave to them and um, how much they gave to me, you know, it's, it's, it's not just, uh, in my mind, it's not just a celebration of me. It's a celebration of, of, you know, what they put into me, the coaching staff, Marty Clark that I had there, um, you know, Dane Pino, Emmett Nah, Joe Rahan, Evan Fitz and all of these guys that are some of my best mates today. And I, and I lived out those four years with it just, it, it kind of, it's like a culmination of all that work that kind of went into it and, and the special years we had there. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty proud moment, pretty special moment for me and my family. Well, we've been very lucky over the last 15 years, specifically with yourself and Dally and Patty, to watch you guys and the careers you've had to this point still going on, of course. Last one I got for you. I, I love your social media and I always see you know, sometimes you've got a camera in your hand, sometimes you've got the, the dog next to you, sometimes you're just having a beer. Uh, what are the type of things that you're getting into? Because it looks like potentially the photography is starting to take off a little bit, if you ask me. Yeah, mate, I uh, I do enjoy my photography a lot. Um, I've probably got too many cameras, and I've got a, a, a 
drone that um, kind of comes with me everywhere. I haven't really done a whole lot with my drone footage yet, but I'll have to figure something out with that. Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, look, my, my hobbies kind of revolve around that. Um, I do love my wine. I've become obsessed with watches. Uh, I haven't pulled the trigger on too many just yet, but um, I do. I, I have a lot of conversations about watches, read a lot of books and articles about them. Um, and then, yeah, just, just chilling with the wife and, and, and my dog and uh, coffee as well. Coffee's a big one for me. So, oh, mate, I've got, I've got a lot of hobbies, um, you know, but, but photography kind of is a nice one that I can take with me to each of the hobbies that I do and, and, and really enjoy uh, capturing moments as I go through life. And, you know, hopefully one day I'll be able to do something cool and, and you know, almost like a, a, a real hardcover Instagram, I suppose, and, and, and portray kind of all the things that I've witnessed and um, been lucky enough to see through my career. I, I want to do – I've thought about doing a little project with uh, – with my camera actually a couple of weeks back, I wanted to do uh, 365 days this year uh, where I took a portrait of someone and, and, and asked them a bunch of questions about their life and, and did something with that, but that never really got off the ground. So oh, I've got some ideas, mate, but um, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe you'll inspire me to kick that off. Oh, I like it. I need to learn. I need to up my social media game, so I appreciate it. Hey, I know some of these questions, maybe not the most upbeat of all time, but uh, one thing I always know, every time we chat, every time we chat, mate, you, your insight is incredible and you're open and you're honest and I think people really enjoy hearing that. So uh, we just want you to be healthy, man. It's a big year. We wish you all the best and yes. we can't wait to see you in the Olympics. I appreciate it, brother. I'm, I'm sure I'll be uh, good to go when that comes. I've, I've looked at myself in the mirror and I feel pretty good about where I'm at.